Okay, uh, this is a solid mechanics and materials uh, level four first year um, exam pass paper. It's the past paper from the 27th of January uh, 2021. Uh, so it was an online paper, um, which may mean that um, a longer time was allowed for some of the online papers, and that means in some cases more was required but i think this is good practice uh, for any exam um so i'm just going to work through this and see where i get to so the first thing that i would do I, i'm really going to approach this as if i was in an exam hall and i just opened up the exam paper and seen this question so i'd say okay it's question three and then the first thing i'd want to do is just draw the diagram out again that's always a good start <clears throat> um I guess drawing the diagram, this triangle at the bottom kind of anchors everything. It's, once you've got that in place, you can see where everything else goes, I think. I'm going to start with that. The diagram doesn't have to be perfect. Mine certainly aren't, um, but it helps you get everything straight in your own head very often if you've got a, a diagram drawn. So <clears throat> it's a good idea. Okay, and then we've got... Um, this triangle here, which we'll come back to in a bit and think about. Uh, we've got a horizontal bar there and a vertical bar there. We've got some right angles marked on. Uh, this is A, B, C, D, E. Uh, there are some angles marked on the diagram, this is 22.5, 25, uh, 45, 45, and 45. So in fact, we can pretty much work out all the angles from that. There are a couple of extra distances marked on. Uh, they're kind of halfway across on the left and halfway across on the right. And they're the same value D. And we know that D equals four meters. Um, so that's useful to know. And then the last thing, <coughs> we've got uh, F1 and F2. F1 equals uh, 10 kilonewtons and F2 equals 8 kilonewtons. And that's all just coming straight off the uh, question paper. Okay. Um, so now we need to think what to do. And when I was talking about this, uh, I went through this on the board in a class, and I said we might do four things. We might do uh, geometry. Um, that's working out unknown lengths. And maybe some angles as well if we needed to. But anything in the geometry that we, we want to know but we don't know, we, we want to do that. Um, then the second thing we might do is resolve forces into horizontal and vertical components. Then the third thing we want to do is find the um, reaction forces at D and E, and then find the member forces. Um, and I'm writing that out because it's kind of useful to have a, a clear plan of how we're going to approach uh, the question. So let's do uh, the geometry. The first bit of geometry that I don't know much about is this triangle here. Um, I'm going to kind of focus on that for a bit. And what I'm actually going to do is draw it out like this. Uh, there's the triangle. Again, I haven't drawn it particularly well. And I'm going to continue it out. Uh, in fact, that exists, that line there. Uh, and this, this line here that I've done is a dashed line. Um, <coughs> it, it doesn't exist uh, it would come down from C to the midpoint of DE, but it's going to be a kind of helpful 
constructor for us to, to understand some of the geometry. Uh, this is 22.5 degrees, this is 22.5 degrees, this is 45 degrees, uh, that's a right angle. This here is actually a half of a right angle, so it must be 45 degrees. I guess another way to look at it is I've got 90 and 45 in this triangle, so it's an isosceles triangle with 45. And we could also work out what that angle there is, I guess it's 135 degrees. And we know one length, uh, we know that this is four. <coughs> so that um, kind of actually has everything we need on it. One thing that I can do that makes it even simpler to look at is just ignore everything that I've drawn on the inside and just redraw it as this triangle here, right? That's the same big triangle with a right angle there. And so now we can work out um, this length and this length using trigonometry. I'll call them, um, uh, let's call them P and Q for just two unknowns. So tan 22.5 is opposite over adjacent. So that's four over P. P equals 4 divided by tan 22.5. Um, and if I get my calculator, just check that my calculator is in degrees, and then 4 divided by tan 22.5, 9.6568. I'm going to call that 9.66 meters. Um, so that's good. And then the second thing that I can use. Uh, Q is the hypotenuse in this triangle. It's opposite the right angle. Um, so I can say I've got opposite and hypotenuse. So sine 22.5 is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And that means Q equals 4 over sine 22.5. Um, that comes out to be 10 point four five meters. I'm just kind of keeping two decimal places uh, for those. And um, that's most of what we're going to need, really. Uh, that's the important information. I guess there's one other thing. Um, if, if this is an isosceles triangle here, 45 degrees and 45 degrees, that means this side and this side are the same. So this is actually four meters from there to there. Um, this whole length we now know is 9.66, which means this length must be 5.66. So we can mark that on our diagram. Um, I can't think of much else that I'm going to want to know about the geometry of the problem. I think we've, we've done enough trigonometry for now. And I can always come back later and um, work out other bits of geometry if I need. OK, next, I said I was going to resolve forces into horizontal and vertical components. Um, F1, the, the force here, is purely horizontal already, so I don't need to worry about that. F2 is at an angle, and I guess it's at an angle of 22.5 degrees to the uh, vertical, and it's down and to the right. So I'm just going to draw out that triangle. This is F2. This is the downwards component, I'll call it V, and this is the to the right component, which I'll call H for vertical and horizontal. So the idea is we're going to break up F2 into vertical and horizontal components. Um, again, this is trigonometry, so um, F2 is the hypotenuse. We'll end up using sine and cos. Uh, cos 22.5 is um, adjacent over hypotenuse. That's V over F2, so therefore V equals F2 cos 22.5. We know that F2 
equals 8 kilonewtons. That was in the question. So it's 8 kilonewtons times cos 22.5. And that's 7.39 kilonewtons. We can do the same thing with sine. And we'll get the horizontal force. That's going to be F2 sine 22.5, which is 3.06 kilonewtons. Again, I'm rounding all of these to, to two decimal places um, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, you could choose to do something different if you wanted. So now, instead of having F2 at an angle, we've got a vertical force and a horizontal force. And that will help us as well, I think. So what I'm going to do now, I've, I've done the kind of first two parts of this question. I'm going to redraw everything and, and just mark up my diagram again. Never be afraid to redraw the diagram. It's a, often a good thing to do and often a good way to clear your own mind as well. Um, if you really can't think of anything else to do, redraw the diagram. Um, okay, it would look like this and then like this. Um, so it's a right angle, that's a right angle. We know all the angles. I'm not going to mark the angles on this one. Uh, but I will mark on some lengths because we've just calculated these. So we know that this length here is 10.45 meters. This length here is 9.66 meters. Uh, these ones are, sorry, uh, they're already marked on. I won't worry about that. This one here, if we needed it, is 5.66 meters. And I guess we also know this one here is four meters. That's because it lines up exactly with the midpoint of DE. Um, you can kind of convince yourself of that, I hope, by looking at the diagram, but check it out if you want. OK, uh, and I've marked on A, B, C, D and E. The next thing I, is I'll mark on those forces, but this time instead of marking them as F1 and F2, I'm going to do the things we've just calculated. This is 10 kilonewtons. And then we said F2 is a downwards force of 7.39 kilonewtons and a force to the right of 3.06 kilonewtons. And then the next thing we're going to do um, Part three on our kind of step-by-step -step instructions for how to solve these questions is to find the reaction forces. And in this case, we've got a pin joint here. A pin joint can't take any moment, but it can take a vertical force, which I'll mark as upwards, and a horizontal force, which I'll mark as being to the left. We might find those are pointing the wrong way. We just get a negative number there, so it'll be okay. I just need to know that there's a potential vertical force and horizontal force there. This um, joint uh, support at E is on rollers. Um, and just to, to confirm, it's on rollers in the actual original question. These, these here are rollers, and I've just redrawn them. Um, and that means it's free to slide sideways, so it can't support any force slide sideways. So there's just an upwards force there. And I'll call these, well, RE, RD vertical, RDV, and RD horizontal, RDH. Now, uh, the next step is to start solving for these. So um, we'll always do fairly similar steps. The first is to look at the horizontal forces, all the forces acting to the left. That's RDH. It's the only force here acting to the left. Must equal all the forces acting to the right. And that's 10 plus 3.06, which comes out to be 13.06 kilonewtons. So we've got one of our reactions there. Next, we'll look at um, vertical reaction forces. Sorry, I'm just going to uh, 
hopefully there's something on my screen. Uh, next we'll look at vertical forces and now we'll say all of the forces acting upwards, that's RdV plus Re, must equal all of the forces acting downwards. And there's only one force acting downwards and that's 7.39 kilonewtons. And we've got three unknowns, uh, one, two, three. So we're going to need three equations to solve. And for the third equation, I'm going to take moments about D. And this is where, this is one of the first places we're going to need to know the geometry of the situation. Um, so let's um, have a look at, if we take moments about D, this pivot here, we don't need to worry about RdV because uh, the, the force passes through the pivot, so the zero distance involved in the moment calculation. We don't need to worry about RdH because the line of the force passes through the pivot. So we've got to account for one, two, three, four other forces and their distance to the pivot. So it's going to be 10 kilonewtons, that's our first force, multiplied by 9.66 metres, plus 7.39 kilonewtons, multiplied by, so the 9.66 was that distance. Here we've got a vertical force, so we're interested in uh, that distance. So that is 4 metres, plus... 3.06 multiplied by, again, it's, sorry, uh, that distance, which is 9.66 metres, um, minus, minus, because all of those forces are tending to pull it that way, but RE is, is kind of resisting everything else, so it's in the opposite direction. It's an anti-clockwise moment. Uh, the force is RE, and the distance is 8 metres. Those are our, all, all the moments that are acting in total, and it's a statics problem. The structure isn't moving, so all those moments must add to zero. That means... Um, 96.6 plus 29.56 plus 29.56 again. Um, equals 8 times Re, and that ends up um, giving me that Re equals the sum of all those things divided by 8. So 96.6 plus 29.56 plus 29.56, 155.72 divided by 8, which equals... 19.47, I'm going to say, kilonewtons. Positive. We know that uh, if I take uh, this line here, that will give us RdV plus 19.47 equals 7.39, so RdV equals, and it's going to be negative, negative 12.08 kilonewtons. Um, so what's really happening there is these forces at the top are kind of pushing everything over so, so much, creating such a moment that actually um, the, the whole structure wants to, to tip over like that, and an RDV is kind of pulling downwards. So this sign that I've drawn here is wrong. It's either negative 12.08 with this sign, or positive 12.08 pointing down. Um, but either way, that's fine. We now know 
all of the external forces acting on the structure. Right, uh, now we are ready to solve the whole problem. And we can start by saying, let's look at the, the force. We're going to use the method of joints now. Uh, and in the method of joints, what we do is we pick any joint. So we'll, we'll go through A, B, C, D, and E, perhaps any of those. And we try to work out all of the forces acting at that joint and say they have to be in equilibrium. Let's start with joint A. It's got uh, an external force of 10 kilonewtons acting that way. And then it's got two potential internal forces acting on it. The first one, I'm always going to draw my internal forces as uh, pulling away from the joint. So this is the tension in AB. And this is the tension in AD. And those are the only forces that can act. There's nothing else that can be going on here at A. Um, you can have tension or in the members, and if I get a negative number, that means it was compression. You can have the external forces, and that's all that's going on. So I can pretty quickly write down two of my member forces. Uh, I can say resolving horizontally, forces acting to the right, which is 10 plus TAB equals zero. So TAB equals negative 10 kilonewtons, i.e. 10 kilonewtons compression. And this is always what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume that my members are in tension when I draw them on my uh, joint diagrams. And then if they're not in tension, I'll get a negative number and I'll know that that means compression. And we can do one other thing. Um, we can say... Uh, resolving forces vertically, forces acting downwards, that's TAD, equals forces acting upwards, that's zero. There aren't any forces acting upwards. So we've got two um, answers already for forces in members. Um, okay, now we go back and we pick another joint to look at. And the next one I'm going to look at, well, we could pick B because we know some of what's going on at B, or we could pick D because we know some of what's going on at D. Uh, just for the sake, either of those would work, but just for the sake of um, alphabetical order, really, I'll jump to joint B next. And at B, we've got the following things going on. Um, two external forces, 7.39 and 3.06. Uh, and then we've got the tension in a, B, the tension in B, C, and the tension in B, E. So I should say T, B, E. Uh, we know uh, T, A, B, equals negative 10 kilonewtons. Sorry, I'm just thinking ahead because T... Ah, okay. So what we can do is, first of all, resolve some forces horizontally. And what we'll get is, if I just look at TBE which is at an angle of 22.5 degrees, and give it another vertical and horizontal component, 
then forces acting to the left, which is minus 10, equals forces acting to the right. That's 3.06 plus h. And therefore, h equals minus 13.06 kilonewtons. We know this angle here is 22.5 degrees, and so we can work out the rest of what's going on in this triangle. Uh, tan 22.5 is opposite over adjacent, that's H over V. So V equals H over tan 22.5, and that is... minus 31.53 kilonewtons and TBE equals we're going to have um, H is opposite TB is the hypotenuse so it's going to I'll, I'll need to use sine maybe it's better if I start over here using sine sine 22.5 degrees is um, opposite, which is the horizontal component, divided by hypotenuse, TBE. So TBE equals uh, H divided by sine 22.5, which is minus 34.13 kilonewtons. And in fact, um, that's another answer. That is the force in um, the member VE, and it's in compression. And we could just do a kind of sense check. It makes sense that if everything's pushing this, uh, this way in the structure, uh, towards the bottom right, as all these forces are, then this member here is going to be in uh, some serious compression. So that kind of adds up. Um, we still got one thing to go at B, which is looking at the vertical force resolution. Uh, so let me mark that on my notes. I'm looking at vertical forces, and I've got 7.39 TBC and V, the vertical component of TBE. And they all point downwards in this diagram, so I can show them all the same. 7.39 plus TBC plus V equals zero. Uh, we know V, 7.39 plus TBC uh, plus negative 31.53 equals zero. So TBC equals thirty one point five three minus seven point three nine twenty four point one four kilonewtons, uh, and that's another one of our final answers. Uh, that is. The, the force in BC, and because it's um, positive, that means it, it is a tension, uh, and, and BC is in tension. Right, uh, now we can go back to our diagram again and pick another joint, and this time I'm going to pick the joint at D uh, and see what's going on there. Um, I'm choosing each time kind of the simplest remaining joint available. So if I look at what's happening at D, uh, we've got some external forces, RDV, which we know uh, from a previous part of the question is, sorry, I just lost track of my paperwork, ah, uh, is 
minus 12.08 kilonewtons. And RDH, which we know is 13.06 kilonewtons. And then we've got TAD, which we've already calculated equals zero. That's a result I found here earlier on when I was looking at joint A. We've got TDE and we've got TCD. And again, TCD is at an angle, so I'm just going to break it up into a horizontal component and a vertical component, like so. So first of all, I guess it makes sense to resolve vertically, which will give us that uh, forces acting upwards minus 12.08 plus V equals zero. So this V here equals 12.08 kilonewtons. We know this angle is 45 degrees. And so that tells us um, tan 45 is one, if you look it up. So um, H is also 12.08 kilonewtons. And then if I do uh, sine 45 is opposite over hypotenuse, that means TCD equals um, V divided by sine 45, which equals 12.08 divided by sine 45, 17.08 kilonewtons. And that's another final answer that we were headed towards. So we're working our way around finding all of these unknown values. Now I'll do um, uh, horizontal force analysis, uh, resolve forces horizontally at this joint, um, forces acting to the left, that's 13.06, equals forces acting to the right, which is TDE plus H, which equals TDE plus 12.08. And when I resolve all of that, I get TDE equals 13.06 um, minus 12.08, uh, 0.98 kilonewtons. Again, a final answer. And in fact, I think there's now only one um, unknown, which is TCE. Um, so if I go to finish off, I look at the joint at E. We've got an external force RE which is 19.47 kilonewtons. We've got TDE, which we know is uh, 0.98 kilonewtons. We've got TCE, which is what we want to find out. And then we've got uh, TBE, but I already know with TBE that I've calculated its horizontal and vertical components. If I just go back to this diagram here, TBE itself is minus 34.13. This horizontal bit is minus 13.06. And this vertical bit is minus 31.53, pointing upwards.
so I can redraw this whole joint with the following things going on. 19.47 upwards, 0.98 to the right, minus 31.53 upwards, minus 13.06 to the left. Sorry, I think I said right earlier when I meant left. <laughs> Watch what I do, not what I say, I think is the, is the key there. So I've marked on both components of TBE, I've marked on this force and I've marked on this force, and all I'm left with is TCE and TCE again will have a horizontal and a vertical component. We are very close to the, the complete solution now. Um, if I look at resolving horizontally, um, minus 13.06 plus 0.98 plus h equals zero. And that means h equals Uh, 13.06 minus 0.98, which is 12.08 uh, kilonewtons. I just want to check. That should be enough. I know the angle is 45 degrees here, but I just want to check um, as a kind of making sure I'm doing things right. If I resolve vertically... I get V plus 19.47 plus negative 31.53 equals zero. And that gives me V equals uh, 31.53 minus 19.47, which comes out to be 12.06 um, kilonewtons. So these two numbers should have been the same. Uh, I guess it's rounding errors. You know, I've been rounding quite a lot as I've gone along and we're working with trig. So I'm happy they're close enough to being the same um, that uh, if this is 45 degrees, which it is, then TCE is going to be uh, sine 45 is opposite over T is V over TCE, TCE is V over sine 45, which equals 12.06 divided by sine 45, which equals 17.06 kilonewtons. And that's our answer. Um, and now we've been around and calculated the member, the, the tension, the force in every single member. Um, so the last thing I would do with this question is to draw out the diagram one last time. Sorry, I think this is the most untidy version of the diagram I've done so far. And I'll just mark that there are these external forces. We're no longer particularly interested in their values. What we want to know is what are the values of the internal forces? Uh, a, B, C, D, and E. And now I'm just going to go through my notes and mark those on the diagram. So TCE is 17.06. Positive numbers, I'll say, indicate tension. And negative numbers 
indicate compression. And all forces are in kilonewtons. Um, what else have we got? So that was TCE. I'm just going back through my notes, finding what I can mark on. I've got TBE here is negative 34.13. Uh, TAB is negative 10. TAD is 0. TBC is 24.14, TDE is 0.98, and TCD is 17.08. Um, again, if I was being uh, sort of worried, I'd note these two should be exactly the same. My 17.08 and 17.06, there's a bit of a rounding error there, but I'm not too worried about that. But overall, that's the question complete. Just to go back, it said, which of the following members are in tension and compression? Well, we've marked that on the diagram using positive and negative numbers. And what are the magnitude of the forces in each member? We've marked all of those onto this diagram here. So that, I think, is how this question works. Um, it's taken me about 40 minutes to work through it all from start to finish, uh, and that's with kind of talking through it out loud. But you can see you need to, to set aside a reasonable amount of time for a question like this. There's a, a fair amount of work involved. Um, so yes, that's how you solve questions relating to the method of joints and uh, structures with external forces applied.